Whoa, whoa, baby, poke it out, poke it out, poke it out. So I'm in bed right now editing this video, and as I'm about to put it up, um, last night me or I made a Discord server, and about 18 people have already joined. So what the purpose of the Discord server is is not just going to be one a place for Saints fans to communicate and talk about a bunch of stuff. It's going to be used in a lot of my live streams. We're going to be doing like a phone line type thing where it's a one on one conversation. We talk about some Saints stuff and then we move on to the next person. It's going to be really fun. So go ahead and join the Discord link in the description. 18 people have already joined and I made it at like 3 in the morning last night. So thank you guys so much. The Discord server link will be down in the description. So go ahead and join it. And yeah, uh, enjoy the video. What is up, everybody? So today I'm really not supposed to be recording a video because of the whole schedule situation. But why not, you know, put in a cheat day every once in a while. I really wanted to put a video out tomorrow, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, this is a video I should be saving for later, but I really want to talk about this. This is really important to talk about, especially with that whole Rise Up Rundown thing going down. Uh, with him thinking that the Falcons are the greatest team in the NFL for literally no reason. I don't understand where that's coming from, but... Uh, this video is just here to put it in, put him in his place a bit, put everyone else in their places. This is a why the Saints will win the NFC South video. I will be letting you guys know all of the reasoning as to why I believe the Saints are the best team in the NFC South and why they will come out once again for the third time in a row on top. Um, for the past couple of years, we have owned the NFC South, and I don't think that's going to change. I don't think anybody made any significant moves in the offseason uh, as far as the Falcons, Panthers, and uh, Buccaneers go. I will not be talking about the Buccaneers too much in this video because uh, they're kind of, I don't know how to put this, um, garbage. Uh, I, I'll, I'll mention them here and there, but they're not going to, this is mainly about the Falcons, Saints, and Panthers because I do not believe the P Buccaneers are going to make great strides just by uh, hiring a new head coach. So uh, yeah, this video is why the Saints will win the NFC South. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. The first reason I believe the Saints will win the NFC South is because of depth. Now, we all know that depth is something that is needed to go out there and win a Super Bowl. If one man gets hurt, you have to have a man to replace him. You have to have a man that can replace him, go out, and do the same job. Not better, not as good, but serviceable. Well enough for that to be, um, you know... A good thing when you have when you look at the Saints roster we have our corners we have Marshawn Lattimore Patrick Robinson and Eli Apple but behind them you have serviceable corners like PJ Williams Chancey Gardner Johnson can even step up in the slot if needed um, uh, Ken Crawley's there but PJ Williams is the main depth piece you want right there so the corners have a lot of depth the linebackers have a lot of depth the defensive line has a ridiculous amount of depth we have Malcolm Brown David on um Jesus Christ Sheldon Rankins all of these players Marcus Davenport um, Mario Edwards jr. so many players on the defensive line that are three four five six seven ten sack a, a year guys a lot of dudes that can come up and replace players when needed to so many moving parts serviceable players we have our offensive line covered running back depth is insane we are a very deep team we are a very deep team we have three serviceable quarterbacks if drew Brees were to, i know i don't know get sick i'm not gonna say get injured he, he gets sick he catch a common cold but we have a lot of serviceable players that can go out there and get the job done if they need to so that is my mainstay one we have the depth depth is something that not a lot of teams have and with the atlanta falcons always saying yo we wouldn't beat us if we're healthy oh see us when we're healthy oh my god we weren't healthy when Deion Jones got hurt. They clearly don't have the depth to go out there and be a Super Bowl team. Let's be honest. One player got uh, hurt on defense, so they're suddenly um, the uh, 28th worst defense in the league. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons do not have the depth to go win a championship. And the Carolina Panthers, they're weird. They have a lot of talent, but they're just weird. I'll, I'll get into that later. But depth, the Saints definitely have the best depth in the entire division. Don't even, uh-uh, the best. Number two would be explosiveness. Now, I know a lot. The NFC South is known for having explosive teams in it. Uh, the Carolina Panthers are not really explosive. Cam Newton was very, very, very um, 
mediocre last year, and Christian McCaffrey carried a lot of the weight. Um, they do they did show some explosive flashes, but it wasn't as much as the Falcons and Saints were showing. Even the Buccaneers had a chip of explosive on their shoulder, but there's something about the New Orleans Saints. There's something about Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Dre Taysom Hill. There are so many pieces to our offense, defense, and special teams. Something can happen at any moment. The field can get lit up at any moment. Drew Brees can throw a 50-yard touchdown at any moment. Alvin Kamara can break off for a 50-yard punt return touchdown, kick return touchdown, running touchdown, catching touchdown at any moment. A lot of our guys can do it all, and that attributes to the disgusting amount of explosiveness we have. Our team is a very, very, very um, blow-up-and-get-points team. Remember when we put up 50 on the Bengals? They're explosive. So we are the most explosive team in the NFC South, though. And I'm going to get into why this matters in reason number four. But yeah, we are explosive. Number three, we are the only team that has a chip on our shoulder. What does Carolina play for? What does Tampa play for? What is Atlanta going to play for next year? To just to escape the pit of mediocrity? We have a chip on our shoulder. We lost two heartbreaking seasons in a row. And for people that think that facing another heartbreak, heartbreaking loss is going to hurt us more than it's going to help us, you're funny. The Saints are using this as a chip on their shoulder. They're using this in the fact that Drew Brees is going to retire soon as motivation to go get him his second ring and really establish him in the GOAT conversation. We're playing with a chip on our shoulder. We're going to be playing extremely angry. We are going to be playing very, very, very mad, very uh, vengeful. We're going to go get our vengeance. The Saints have an extremely big chip on their shoulder, something like no other team in the NFL has. They're going to be playing like this year is their last on this planet, and that's going to be an extremely good thing to watch. I'm excited for it. Watch out. We are angry. We have a chip on our shoulder. We're going to try and go get this done now. All right. Now, here's the where the statistics come in. Number four is balance. Now, what you've seen last year was that we were the only team in the division that had legitimate balance. Uh, Carolina's balance isn't that bad. Atlanta. You need to get a new, you need to fix something because y'all are so horribly unbalanced. It's ridiculous. So I got the stats right here um, for offense. Falcons were ranked number six offense in the NFL with 25.9 points per game. Panthers, they were ranked number 10th offense in the NFL with 23.5 points per game. Saints, they were ranked 8th offense in the NFL with 31.5 points per game. The reason we were ranked 8th instead of uh, a lot higher than Atlanta at 6 when we scored more points is because uh, our yardage was very, very low for some reason. There were a lot of returns that were extremely far. Our special teams contributed very well to the offense not gaining many yards. As, and so same thing as defense making plays and stuff like that. So we were ranked 8th best offense. And the Panthers and the Falcons were 6 and 10, respectively. So, here's where it gets interesting. The Falcons' defense was ranked 28th in the league at 20, at allowing 26.4 points per game, but a ridiculous amount of yards. The Panthers' defense was respected. The Panthers' defense was ranked a respectable 15th with 23.9 points per game allowed. The Saints defense was ranked 14th with a 22.1 points per game allowed. Now, when you look at the, the Saints and Panthers numbers, they're pretty close. 14th and 15th, we only allowed one less point than them, but that is because how long it took for our defense to click. From week 7 onward, I think we had the 7th best off, uh, defense in the NFL. We were top 10 on defense minus the first six weeks of football. We came around and the defense molded when it needed to, and we got our wins. Uh, the, the Falcons and Panthers both went 7-9, and nine, and that is a tribute to the, 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 the off-balance they have. They were really off-balanced, and I don't understand why. The Panthers were only ranked so high on offense because they started the year out hot and then fell off. It's backwards of what our defense did. So fell with the seventh best defense after week seven and the eighth best offense overall in the entire year. So yeah, we have the balance that no other team in the NFC South had. Number five, the biggest reason, the biggest reason 100% as to why we're winning the NFC South is just coaching. It is just coaching. 
We have the best, I don't want to hear it, we have the best coaching staff in the NFC South. We do. Dennis Allen has formed an amazing, extremely respectable, solid brick wall defense that we have been looking for. The Falcons have had so much talent for so many years, but have not been able to go anywhere because their coaching staff sucks. Their coaching staff is garbage. How do you fail as a coach to take advantage of Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, Devonta Freeman, all of these fantastic players you have on your team and you can't take advantage of them? Their defense isn't that bad either on paper. They got Deion Jones, all of those other players that they have, um, that one fat dude, I forgot his name. They have a lot of solid players, but because of their terrible coaching staff, don't amount to anything. Our coaching staff is the only really competent one in the NFC South. For some reason, the Panthers have the same issue. They have so much talent, ranked 10, ranked 10th on offense in the NFL last year and 15 in defense and couldn't even crack the playoffs. They went 7 and 9. How are you upper half on um defense and have a top 10 offense and don't go over 7 and 9? That is something the New Orleans Saints will never do. Every negative season we have ever had, we had one of the worst defenses in the NFL. You gave us a top 15 defense like this year, we go 13-3 and three in our in, uh, Super Bowl runner-ups. That is the difference between all of the teams in the NFC South. We get coached right. We can use our talent. When we, give, when we have a defense as good as it was this year, which is only middle of the pack according to the statistics, we go really well really really far now with all that being said what do you guys think do you guys think we're gonna win the nfc south do you think the panthers will come up and grab it do you think the falcons will come up and grab it i'm really interested to know what y'all think so go ahead and leave a comment down below go ahead and let me know what you think do are the falcons gonna win are the saints gonna win do you agree with my points do you have other points you would have made in this video go ahead and comment that down below and i'll see you in the next one adios i think my neighbors um in the backyard are listening